So, welcome to Portugal. Welcome to our Harmidox International 26. And, <laughs> and thank you very much, Naomi, for your words. The only thing I can say is that I have gained a friend. And that's not, not something that we can despise on. And the thing that I also can tell you about Naomi Brookshine is that she is a remarkable person and that we, people from harm reduction community, we are in a very safe hands. So please, an applause to Naomi. <clears throat> Sorry for breaking down the protocol. Now I want to thank and say that I feel quite honorable and proud to have the presence of the High Commissioner, Michelle Bachelet, with us. This is a huge privilege, thank you very much, to have you know, the presence of our former president, George Sampaio, once president, always president, the man that was very important for our decolonization law here in Portugal. I want to thank you also to Raquel, to the MPs, the Honorable MPs from the Parliament, Professor Alexandre Quintanilla and Ricardo Batista Leite. I want to thank you very much, our Mayor of Porto, for honor us with his presence. And of course, I want to thank the Portuguese President of Truck Users Union, Rui Coimbra. So thank you very much for being here. <clears throat> And I was talking about friendship, and actually, I am going to change a little bit my few words. I only have more four or five minutes, I believe. And first, I would start to say that decriminalization in Portugal was based, was desi designed based on humanism, political courage, evidence base, pragmatism, and participation. These principles fit quite well as a mirror with harm reduction principles, as all of us, we know that. But we need more than principles. We need, when we talk about political courage, we need someone like the former president, George Sampaio, capable to lead a process, to be capable to stand and fight against the opponents that have a different idea, a different ideology about drug policy on those times in Portugal. And we need someone that is capable to sign the final document and to put it as a legal one that then starts to create a new regulation, a new normative. So I feel so proud and inspired with this political courage of our former president, Jorge Sampaio, and I want to thank you in a very special way because of that. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I also... <laughs> but I also want to thank you, a man that sometimes is, behaves a little bit like an, an anonymous person in the issue of decolonization in Portugal. I'm referring to a great scientist, a leader, a man capable to deal and lead a bunch, let's say like that, of experts and egos that 20 years ago were designing and setting up the, our Portuguese model. I'm referring to Professor Alexandre Quintanilla, that is not an expert on drugs policy, but he has a huge quality besides his intelligence. He's a humane person and is someone capable to understand the others and mainly someone capable to establish bridge where we can come and communicate and put our ideas on the table. So thank you very much for your good work, Professor Alexandre Quintanilla. It was amazing what you have done 20 years ago, amazing. And I'm describing this, you know, humanistic part of Professor Shan Kitanila, but, but I can tell you this is a god, a real brilliant mind in science. So he's someone that likes to be guided by the rationality in a, not only emotions. And of course, I want to thank you to our Health Secretary of State, Dr. Raquel Duarte, that was someone that was a kind of campaign de route 
because she started working with us almost 20 years ago on the ground as a phys physician and implementing one of the first methadone programs, low threshold, uh, with a safe doses uh, of 30%, and it was capable to receive an European Best Award from WHO because of the boundaries that was pushing forward on those times. It was a low threshold progr program where peers had a word where they can say if the, the methodolog methodology was okay or not okay. So thank you very much, Raquel, for that. <laughs> and two minutes more and I will finish. <clears throat> I, when we talk about principles of the law and when we talk about principles of you know, harm, harm reduction, maybe, and when we talk about practices and action on the ground, maybe we need to talk about consistency. How can the law be translated to a praxis that somehow respects the values that are implicit in that law? And I think that's something that we have learned in Portugal is that the people, they make the difference. They are the people that are capable to implement the law. But for that, we need to open a room so that people can be a part of that kind of action and implementation. Saying this, I want to underline the work that people from CASO, Drug Users Union, the work that the community of harm reduction professionals in Portugal is being doing, the work of professionals coming from the state, that are doing, still doing, in the field of drug policy and harm reduction, and tell you a final story about how the consistency of the implementation of a law is so important for us and can make the difference. So, two years ago in Porto, five, six NGOs decide to no, fight no more, decide to, we need to share our resources, we need to share our knowledge, we need to share our vision about harm reduction. And we need to do that to implement and design a project of DCR in, in, in Porto, of drug consumption room. And for that, we also invited the Porto University because we needed evidence and we needed evaluation. And of course, we invited the Portuguese Drug Users, Users Union in the, in the person of Rui Quimbra. And since then, since the last two years, we design a project, we present the project to our national government, uh, Department CICAD, we present it to the municipality of Porto, and we present to the Health Regional Department. And for me, the beautiful thing of this was that everyone, from professionals to researchers to decision makers and drug users or people using drugs, real people, have a final word, have a statement capable to be included in our regional strategy or city strategy for DCR. So I believe that this probably possible DCR in Porto, if it goes fo forward, it will be a good example of collaboration and dialogue is essential when we want to implement harm, harm reduction strategies. Because if we have a DCR that was not negotiated, that was not based on dialogue with, between different stakeholders, we don't have anything. We only have a machine of control. And I believe if this DCR, maybe, I don't know, in the future, could be a possibility in Porto, that will be so because of the dialogue that was the basis of everything. So with that, I leave a challenge to our mayor, the Honorable Rui Moreira, to accept it or not, the project that civil society has designed in a dialogue basis. Thank you very much, Dr. Rui Moreira, Mayor of Porto.